All right, class, I wanted to show you an interesting problem I ran into and, and one possible way to kind of solve it. Um, I designed this body and, and actually had done this curve to match the uh, cover, um, and doing threads on it is kind of a problematic, so um, I wanted to end up changing this anyway to a straight kind of out section. But here's what's happening. When I go in to do the shell tool, click on this end, and I won't try to show you any other ones. I'll show you a thickness that does work. 0.4 in this case, okay, um, and let it go through and figure this out, and hit OK to it, and let me turn on the section uh, analysis, i got one that runs right through the middle to kind of show you what's going on with this, right there. So what you see with this, even though this is was one whole solid hole, because of a little mismatch probably in uh, tolerance or something like that way inside of the form because I had modeled the body and then it stitched it uh, or, or combined it with this there's something mathematically that it doesn't see it as one whole form and I can't go beyond um, about 0.45 to get a, a thickness out of this anyway so it's real too too small um, and I get this weird wall in the middle there kind of between what was the original two pieces now they're combined so they're not two pieces anymore so it's just like I said something really strange with it. So I wanted to kind of show you a um, possible way to kind of solve this and, and deal with this issue when you run into something like this. Um, let me undo that. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is back up in the timeline all the way back to there when I was sculpting this. So I'm going to right mouse click and say roll history marker here. Okay. Now at that point it was apparently invisible, so I'll turn it back on. So there's my T-spline form. Okay. So I want to try to make sure this edge matches the new piece that I'm going to model better. So let me do this. Let me go in and turn on this sketch. On this sketch, there is a um, circle right there, which is the diameter of what I need to do for my new piece. So I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to go to Extrude, click on that contour, pull it out. OK. And go ahead and OK to that. I'm going to. Um, move this out okay so let me do this right mouse click on this say I want to move it and actually I want to move the whole body not the piece and translate it let's see pick the direction all right there we go that's it and now Hang on. Alright, let me try this over again. Alright, mouse click, say so we want to move. We want to move bodies. There's body. Um, free move doesn't line it up properly, so that's why I'm trying to translate it. And when you do that, you got to pick a face or an edge. doesn't have one, so. And there we go. So we'll move it out a little bit mainly just to be able to see what's going on. All right, let's go in and edit the T-spline form. Now, if I do it now, that new extrusion is actually going to be after this. So I'm going to click on this and drag my T-spline form all the way to there. That way it's after the move um, and um, after the extrude and the move like that. And right mouse click and say edit. Now, the tools that I'm going to show you once again, are the pull tool and also the match tool. Okay, both of these don't work with closed ends like this. They work with um, edges. So first thing off, I'm gonna get rid of um, the faces at this end. Apparently, I did a um, um, close into the um, T-spline form, so that's where that came from. So I've just deleted them, got rid of them. Um, I'm also going to get rid of the symmetry, clear that off as well. Okay, so let's go through and look at the first tool. So if I go in and do this one called pull, what it does is individual vertices that it pulls over. Okay, so when you activate it, you'll see that those become active. I'll click on one and then I'll go select the um, target, which is in this case going to be this edge. And you can see as I click on each one of these, now I gotta make sure I jump back to here, um, I can pop it up in place. 
So as it goes around, it'll start kind of flattening out. Now, this tool will probably work really good if you were trying to take a bunch of vertices or open edge like this and kind of like flatten it out uh, to do something along that lines to work with this. Um, what you'll notice in doing this, let me zoom up on it, it's kind of, if you can see it there, it doesn't quite match the original shape that the T-spline form is kind of being, um, you know, not matching on all this edge. So I want to do something different. So this works good if you're just trying to pull a bunch of vertices down to like a flat plane or do something like that. Um, and so, okay, so let me cancel that and then I'll undo all that part. All right, the other one is match. So I'll go back in and look at match. Now what the way this works, okay, this allows me to pick this whole edge. So make sure you pick the edge and, uh, and double click on it to get this whole edge. Otherwise it'll do crazy things and you won't be able to kind of work with it too much. So I'll double click select the whole edge. I'll come over here and select the target edges. In this case, this is part of this cylinder. It will pull it over. Now, let me switch it back. I had been working with this earlier, so it's kind of all different things. So, the first one is simply position. So, it took it from there, the red line, over to there. Um, it still doesn't relate at all to the cylinder shape, so it comes down here and kind of moves off. Position basically just touches it but doesn't have any kind of continuity with the um, the other edge. Um, if I start trying different ones, now what, also what I'm making sure of the maximum deviation. So that tells me how uh, different this edge is from the reference one. So 0 0.095 millimeters, not too bad. Um, you can try to go and specify your own tolerance. So right there I put in 0 0.01 and it actually dropped this maximum deviation down to 0 0.005 millimeters, so definitely a lot better. So I'll stick with that, um, and I'll switch now to tangent, okay? Right there, you see what's happening is that this part of the T-spline is now matching better, or almost basically coming off straight right there and then blending in um, between the two. So that is working pretty good. Deviation still down at that point, so that's pretty good. Um, there is the tangent weight. What this does is it allows you to kind of control. Let's see if I can get this to kind of work. So notice if I pull it back, it's not as flat as it was before. Though it's weighted less. That started at 1, so let me put it back to 1. Okay. So you can type in values and try something here to see how it looks sculpted wise between those two. Okay. Now, interesting thing is the tangent direction can be like that, but also perpendicular. So if you click on this, notice it pops it around to 90 degrees. So you can easily do something like that with it as well. Okay, so but I'm trying to match it up a little smoother, so I'll put that back. Spacing, right now I'm going to keep it uniform. Um, curvature will basically kind of um, manipulate this edge so that these, you know, are, are based off the curvature as it runs around. Um, sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. Um, in this case, I don't think it's any difference. I don't see any maximum deviation differences with this. Alright, so that's the spacing of these points. Now, there is another kind of continuity, and this is curvature. When you do that, notice what happens is the curvature from here has to match that, and it really pushes and changes the body a great deal. Um, even though this is at 0.5 now, the full length. So, um, I'm going to actually switch this back to tangent. That's probably more appropriate in this case. 0.5 weight, that's not bad. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK to this. Um, and then finish out the form. Now, I can't join these two to basically do the shell right now because this is a surface, it's an open body. So what I have to do in this case is switch over to the patch mode, go in here and create a patch, which is simply picking that in, saying okay, all right. Now it's a separate surface. Now I go to modify, stitch, click on there, click on that, and hit okay. Now that's a solid. And I can turn this back on, go back to my model, go to modify, and now do combine. So we combine that with that. And then hit make sure it's set to join. Now I got one body. Go back to modify, do shell, click on there, and let's try one millimeter right off the bat and see if it works. Give it a second to kind of crunch through. Um let me try a little bit thicker in this case. 
um, interesting wise it and you know practicing this earlier it actually worked at one millimeter without any problems so it all kind of just depends and, and I probably did something different with the weights here with this and, and that's why it's changing in this case um, so it it does you know at some point work out that I can do this distance unfortunately it's cranking away at, uh, thinking about it at this point um, but um, this is I would say a better method to do this now let me try Strike point five. Okay, start there. Let's see if that works any better. There we go. Okay, and we can try maybe point seven or something like that, and kind of slowly build it up and see if we can get a little more thickness out of this. Um, so, like I said, it did seem to work better. I probably had the weight before at one, so that may have made a difference. There's that issue again. Um, so I'm not sure if I really solved much with this. Just got a little bit thicker uh, edge out of this.